Hello, I'm Saytech. I'm going to talk you through my live setup. We're going to take a look at Subtractive Synthesis. have a MacBook Pro here running Ableton. Also use Machine, but I don't actually use it live, but I create a lot of my material on Machine and then transfer it over in audio. Also running um, some D16 plugins, which are 909, 808 and 303 emulators. Here I've got my um, Impulse 25 Novation, great controller keyboard. I run everything through a DJ mixer and uh, I basically use all four channels and then on the send and return I've got the Pioneer RMX 1000 and that's daisy chain through the Chaos Pad 3. That means that I can put effects over any one of these channels at one time and uh, I can also kind of do live drums and stuff because I've put my own samples in. Here I've got the Volca range of things. I love these bits of kit. The bass is great. Um, I don't really use it much for bass. I kind of use it for kind of 303-ish stuff, but um, it's got a great sequencer on it. Keys, amazing. I really particularly like the fifth. It's kind of like a, a, a chord almost, and uh, you can do some really nice kind of stabby stuff on it, and then you can kind of manipulate it live really nicely, particularly the decay and release and uh, the detune and the portamento and the envelope uh, initiate. You've got a nice delay on it as well, which is um, kind of cool. Yeah, I think it's digital, but it sounds kind of analog-y, so you can get some kind of good effects out of that. Volker sampler, my fiance actually bought it for me and even with the internal samples I was making patterns on it. For the money, just the sound you can get out of it is great and a really good fun to use. Recent purchase actually, the analog rhythm, the drum synthesis, the sound design on it is amazing. Uh, the analog drums just sound really, really fat. Great sequencer as well. Electrized sampler, really, really nice, simple, effective. And all this stuff goes through this submixer here. So this is to mix this stuff. The analog rhythm actually goes through its own channel on there. These boxes here, I kind of make whole patterns with. So like on this, I've got the, the kick, the bass, the hi-hat, maybe a stab or something like that going on. And same on this, because it's got sampling facilities as well. Same on that and, and same on Ableton as well. So. The fun really starts happening when I'm kind of mixing them together. I like using the internal sequences on stuff. Um, this, this is my dedicated uh, MIDI clock and this sends out uh, MIDI clock to everything. So this keeps everything in time. So um, I can improvise. You know, in Ableton, I've got loads of channels of audio down here and I've got loads of scenes where I've kind of programmed different kind of variations of, of one pattern in, in and I can, I can trigger scenes to kind of arrange those patterns. Um, at the same time, I can mix a pattern of that in and a pattern of that in and a, and a pattern of any of that stuff in, so I can just kind of go on a, on a journey when I want to go on a journey. This is a Roland MC909. I think it came out about 15 years ago, but I've been using it for 12 or 13 years. I always describe it as a 90s studio in the box, but set up for performance. It's got drum machines in it. It's got loads of synth patches in it. You can expand the synth patches on the back. It's got a sampler. The sequencer is great. You can get really in depth and do a lot of sound design on it as well. Um, you can treat all the samples in exactly the same way as you do your waveforms. It's got a pattern call, so you can actually call up any pattern with these keys. It's got RPS, which means you can actually trigger parts live, and you can, it doesn't have to be parts of the pattern you're playing. You can put any part from any of your sequences on here and trigger them live, that's great. You've got a mute and unmute and a mixer here. It's not real analog, but the, the kick drums, when you're playing them out through a sound system, sound 
really fat. Um, you can get really nice bass lines out of it. I'm in love with this machine. It's really sad for me to, to stop using it, but what happened is, I've, this is my second one, and they kept on breaking down on me because I've kind of take, taken it in this uh, bruised and battered flight case um, everywhere I go. And I was playing in Berlin last weekend, and basically uh, it started turning itself on and off. So I was like, right, I love you, but you've got to go. Everything I take on stage has to be 100% reliable. If it lets me down once, it's out. You have to be able to trust your kit. So um, I got my credit card out and, and bought the um, Analog Rhythm, which was a really nice purchase, actually. Um, the Analog Rhythm and the Electrode Sampler, they're different beasts completely, but you can do a lot more on this than you can on even those two together. Everything is MIDI. For a while I used to use USB hubs and they always used to let me down, they'd break or you know, they'd crash my computer. To now I have one USB for audio and one USB for MIDI. And then I've got uh, you know, USB through boxes, even the kit which is, has USB MIDI, I use traditional MIDI on rather than the USB MIDI. It may not be as fast, but um, it's actually really reliable. first came out it was just audio. I got a copy really early on. I haven't really taken stuff away, I've just added stuff to the template as time goes on. I started using the scenes very early on and keeping things simple on Ableton and whilst triggering stuff on the keyboard um, meant that I could be muting and unmuting stuff on the hardware and controlling effects and stuff at the same time. So um, that kind of approach I just kind of stuck with it because if I got too involved in muting and unmuting stuff in Ableton, then I wouldn't have the hands free to do the other stuff as well. It got a bad name a little while back for live acts using Ableton, because it was assumed that they had prearranged the whole live set. And I've seen quite a few people do that in clubs. They've put live after a name, and effectively what they've done is they've arranged a, you know, an hour or two hours in Ableton, and they, they're just pressing play, and it's going through the whole thing. It's not even a DJ set, you know? For me, personally, I'd hate that. I'd hate to be in front of a crowd and going, oh, this isn't working, I can't change it. In the scene page, you can actually really, really improvise with it, and you can uh, you can probably be more live in Ableton than you can on the hardware because you can do so much at once. I mean, I think the beauty of hardware is its limitations, and the beauty of Ableton is that it doesn't really have any limitations. You know, it's just if you want 60 channels and 100 scenes, as long as you've got enough um, RAM. Uh, you know, a, a fast enough hard drive and a processor, you can do that. I'll make some stuff on machine, I'll make some stuff in Spark, and I'll make stuff outside in different Ableton files. And what I do is I always bounce down the audio. So here's a loop that I made earlier. This loop that I've made is uh, been made in machine, it's been made in uh, um, some synths in uh, Ableton and it's also got some uh, sampled loops in it where I've kind of manipulated them and, and put effects on them and stuff like that. Now I want to be able to take all that as audio. I've got lots and lots of uh, audio tracks and I've got different effects on, on each one. I do all my mixing in the clips, I do all my automation in the clips. Um, I have set parameters on here, 
So uh, that's a, you know, that's a cut off and the resonance for my synth. But that's actually a, a plug-in. The synth itself is a rendered audio, and the only things that I've got as soft synths are the um, D16 stuff, which is the, the 303 and the um, the 909 and the 808 emulation. So here I've got a, a loop. It's not mixed or anything like that, but it's a, a beginning of an idea for the for the live show. So what I'll do is I'll take this. As you can see, this stuff is all MIDI here. That's MIDI in there, and so I've got all the drums and stuff are all MIDI. What I do is I'll freeze all these tracks and flatten them, and that converts everything automatically into um, audio. And then I can copy and paste that and put that in my, uh, my main live template set and then I'll just have to mix it in the clips and, and kind of move the stuff, say the, the stab, I'll move that to a channel so it comes out of the second channel of my mixer um, and then I can tweak the cut off and, and that kind of stuff. This is my current live set and it's potentially, I, can, I only perform for two hours um, because I just don't have the stamina to perform for any more but um, actually I've got like five, six hours worth of music there and quite a wide range of genres as well. Um, obviously it's all kind of underground house and techno, but within that, spe within that spectrum I could, I've got a lot of stuff. So here I've got, um, I'll create a new scene, insert scene, and I will, and see there all that has come across into here as audio so i'm still synced up to my midi clock so i'm gonna take that off so that's all in there so that's obviously not mixed and that needs mixing so the kick's there so i can mix that in the clip itself and i can create a new scene there and then we can start from that loop building up something that I can then perform live with. So, so I want to start with just here. Here's the elements here and I want to So we want to take the some percussion to start off with so So say I wanted to start with that, and then I'm going to duplicate that scene and say I wanted to um, add a bass line that I've created in Machine. So that's now in there. And next scene, I want to drop the kick drum out. And then I want to add my chord at the same time so I can filter that up. And then I, in here, there's a delay on, the, on, on that channel, but I don't want that much delay on it. So I'm going to go into the clip itself and I'm going to change the dry wet in the clip and the filter is assigned to there. And then after that, I want that to kick in with the toms and the ride. And a handy little tip as well is you can, um, if you take off that clip button there, that will continue playing. So if you've got a 16 bar loop or something like that, um, that will just continue playing over to the next scene. So now I've arranged it like that. I can now, by just by using this, I can now arrange that live.
and then Did live shows, I had about 10 people carrying like boxes of like every, I didn't pack my stuff up properly. I just had people carrying like the individual bits of equipment to the club with me, you know. Basically, people you thought I could set up in the DJ booth in tiny little clubs. I'd say, look, I need a table to set up on, and, and like quite a few times I'd have to carry like tables with the engineer across the dance floor and stuff. So it's been a big learning curve. DJ, I just wanted to um, take the sound out live and then at one point I was taking out um, desktop computers to clubs. Uh, had hardware as well but I was playing a, a live set at a party with Mr C in a Corsica studio. Just when it opened up they put me right in front of the Function 1 sound system and the hard drive basically worked its way out of the, um, out of the computer because of the vibration so I was just stuck jamming with the hardware. You know? Only recently, with the MC909 letting me down, that I've had to have a kind of briefing and, and change stuff. I think it's better to have equipment that you know, like the back of your hand, than to get new stuff. You know, I think that analog rhythm and that electro sampler, it's going to take me a few years to actually really, really know them like the back of my hand and take them out and perform them and be at one with them, you know and not think about what I'm doing with them and just do it, you know, instinctively. That's how I got with the, the MC, that's how I am with Ableton, that's how, you know, it just, I don't have to think about it, I can just work it. And I think that takes, that takes time. You know, have fun, work out how you want to do it, and, um, and don't rush it, you know. 